Welcome back to the Dutton Ranch, where the drama never ends. In the explosive fifth season of Yellowstone, the Dutton family faces their most dangerous threats yet. John is sworn in as governor of Montana. Beth and Jamie have a stare down. Market Equity CEO Caroline Warner is upset that John won, certain it spells the death of the airport and resort. Governor Dutton reconfirms he didn't want the job, he just wants to preserve what makes Montana special. He announces his first official action is to cancel the funding for the Paradise Valley Airport project and surrounding commercial developments. Night falls as the stolen horses are corralled and wait to be picked up. Casey calls Monica to update her on what's happening. She appears to be ready to give birth any minute, even though it's three weeks before her due date. Casey's worried about her driving and says he'll have an ambulance meter on the road. Casey leaves and heads out with the horses. Monica crashes the car on the way to the hospital and loses the baby. Tate reveals his mom and dad named the baby John. Casey assures Tate that his mom will be okay. Casey and Monica discuss burying their lost son at the ranch so they can always visit him. John appoints Beth as his chief of staff to stop the airport construction. Jamie tells him that he'll be sued personally, but Beth finds a zoning loophole. Linnell warns John that market equities will come for his land and that he needs to find a political solution. When the ranch hands find a dead cow in the fields, Rip suspects wolves. Jamie delivers the executive order revoking rights to build the airport, warning John it will be a declaration of war. Market equities start cease and desist orders to prevent the action. The ranch hands spot a pack of wolves preying on a dead cow and shoot them, then find that the wolves are from Yellowstone Park and marked with electronic collars. Rip and the ranch hands gather the collars and ride into the park, imitating wolf pack movements, then attach the collars to driftwood and throw them in the river. In a flashback, John finds dead animals around a stream on his property, worries there's something in the water, then finds utility workers spraying an EPA-approved plant killer. The ranch hands come back at night, vandalize their equipment, and spray the foreman's house with the deadly weed killer. After getting knocked out and falling unconscious in the treated grass, the foreman wakes up surrounded by dead birds and suffering from chemical poisoning. Law enforcement officials investigate the missing wolves and question Rip, then insist he ride out with them to track the wolves. They go to the spot where the wolves were killed, but the land has been plowed, removing all evidence. Talking with members of Monica's tribe, Casey and Monica discuss how they're going to say goodbye to their son's spirit. Jamie arrives at his office, where he's been served by Sarah Atwood. Sarah appeals to Jamie financially, believing she knows he knows he's made a mistake in canceling the lease, then invites him to dinner. In Salt Lake City, Beth offers up her controlling shares in Schwartz & Meyer to market equity's rival, but will keep the Montana real estate. She does so under the guise of relinquishing her power because equities will be coming after her stake in a lawsuit. The rival company signs the deal, much to Beth's delight, allowing her to block equities from building on the ranch. Beth, Rip, Carter, and the ranchers celebrate at a bar in Bozeman. Another woman starts flirting with Rip, then unwisely approaches an angry Beth, who breaks a bottle over her head. A bar brawl ensues, the police arrive, and Sheriff Ramsey charges Beth with aggravated assault. John, still adapting to being governor, sees his policy staff meeting in the Capitol building. When John asks why he was not invited, he is displeased with their responses and fires all of them on the spot. Jamie is forced to help Beth in jail. The woman that Beth attacked arrives to file a complaint, but Jamie convinces her to reconsider and leave the state. This allows Beth to go free, but Jamie spitefully has her charged with disorderly conduct. When Jamie picks her up, Beth sees his child seat and discovers Jamie has a son, which infuriates her. She swears that she will take the child away from him, and Jamie narrowly avoids running her over. Casey and Monica bury their child on the ranch's family cemetery, following her Native American traditions and Casey comforts her. John talks with Casey, thanking him for naming the child after him, and then comforts Monica, sharing a personal story that seems to bond them. John commutes Summer's sentence after a year of time served and becomes her supervisor so she can help him fight the upcoming Wolf Court case. Jamie meets Sarah Atwood at a bar and ends up having sex with her in the bathroom of her hotel, while Beth listens from a distance. She finds Sarah's license and discovers it's fake, but before she can investigate further, has a tense encounter with Summer, now her father's guest. 
John is assessing his new position as governor and what he sees as his primary responsibilities to saving the Yellowstone Ranch. He changes tactics politically and clears his appointments for two weeks so he can camp with his many cowboy friends to see to the needs of the ranch. John tasks his office to begin planning an extravagant public event at his home to increase his political base, whom he plans to use to save his ranch from hostile market-based takeovers. Beth is livid with John for signing her out for custodial supervision at their ranch house. When Summer, a vegan, eventually sits down at the supper table with the Duttons, she criticizes the table and the chef for the family's carnivorous dinner. Beth immediately invites Summer to step outside and the two get into a fight. Rip gets the two to batter each other punch for punch until Beth lands a blow that nearly knocks Summer out, forcing her to concede and fostering a little respect. The next day, the Duttons and ranch members begin silent and determined preparations for their three-day bivouac, which creates a thoughtful atmosphere for Summer to reflect. She watches the cowboys depart for the distant parts of the vast Yellowstone Ranch. The cowboys, along with John, make it across the vast Yellowstone Ranch and begin to round up the cattle. Beth reconnects with Rip, who shows her his dream location at Yellowstone. He thinks it might make an impression on Beth as a place to finally build her own home, and she is deeply impressed. While John and the Cowboys are away, a government military detachment of special services arrives at the reservation to begin setting up a perimeter for a VIP to arrive for a large public reception. Jamie reacts impulsively when he is seduced by Sarah and starts having multiple sexual encounters with her. She eventually makes clear that she wants him to grandfather permission for equities to build the new airport near Yellowstone. Jamie is convinced he can do so. Mo discovers that the President of the United States is unexpectedly arriving at the reservation for a visit of public support. During the herding, a fellow cowboy and friend of John's dies in his sleep, which John calls the perfect cowboy's death. John goes to comfort the widow of the elderly cowboy, which is captured by TV cameras. In a flashback, Rip is jeered by a cowboy for Beth's affections, leading to a fight that leaves his rival severely injured. Despite going to John for help, the cowboy dies. Agreeing to hide the crime, John makes Rip promise to devote the rest of his life to the ranch, implying his Yellowstone branding. Jamie is confronted by Market Equities and Sarah, with official papers stating that the Dutton Ranch and property is protected as a national park under state jurisdiction. Jamie is livid since John and Beth kept him out of the loop. Sarah warns him that equities will sue the state, potentially leading to bankruptcy. She convinces him that John needs to be removed from office and promises him equity support in becoming the next governor. At the ranch, John and the Cowboys discover that part of the land has been contaminated by bison, forcing them to use winter resources to feed the cattle. With little choice, John decides to lease some land in Texas to protect the livestock, although doing so will put them in debt. Beth discovers another form of income, as opposed to ranching, and struggles to get her father to agree. Jamie prepares a speech to the state assembly, calling for John's impeachment. Rip and the other cowboys make their way to Texas, leaving Casey to run the ranch. As John lends support to Rainwater and the Broken Rock Reservation in defiance of a pipeline, he learns that Jamie has publicly called for his impeachment. Beth finds out and threatens Jamie with revealing how he dumped the body of his biological father, whom she forced Jamie to execute. Jamie informs Beth about the uselessness of her evidence, revealing the long tradition of the Duttons dumping their enemies in a no man's land called the train station, leaving Beth shocked and speechless. Jamie points out how their father's reckless, stubborn actions have done the ranch more harm than good and that the only way for it to thrive is to remove him from power. Realizing she had underestimated Jamie, Beth suggests to John that her brother might need to be taken to the train station himself. John is visibly uncomfortable about the idea and does not respond. Unbeknownst to Beth, Jamie has anticipated his sister's murderous intentions and plans to counter by asking Sarah about hiring professionals. Well, that was one hell of a ride. What did you think of the dramatic season finale? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more recaps and theories. See you next time.